Greetings to you all that have joined us on this Shabbaton, this time of rest. That we may delight in the abundance of the riches of Almighty Yah, that we may enjoy His substance that He grants unto us by revelation that our ozen, our ears, our eyes, our knowledge, it is open. The covering has been pulled away. And the only way that can consist, and we walk in the persistence of that in our lives, there must be the revelation. Your sure must be real. It's more than the accolade of saying that he is real. It is a persona of our lives and what it represents, what it denotes. It is the characteristics of Yah that are displayed even from this flesh that is corrupt. And that must be the identity of Yisraya, the Bohir, the elect of Almighty Yah. It is vitally important for us to understand that, especially in the time that we are in. This is a depraved demented generation that the mind has thrown down it has trodden down the Torah of Yah in every kind of vile religious uh, tenets are rising up and they're creating their own images of their damnable most despicable created thing in their mind their image uh, of a damn twisted God and their Christo, their Christ, their lords, their Be'ez, their gods, and their twisted Yisra'ya. That is why Yah shall bring the Be'ez of Yisra'ya to a time that is most prominent. Listen, I know we don't understand the book because first of all, we are not a, we are not a Talmud. A Talmud is a student, and it also implies that a Talmud is a scholar. It also it implies that a Talmud is a pupil. I prefer the latter. I'm a pupil of Almighty Yah by the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. And so we must become tal Talmuds. We must become the Talmudim of Yah. Students of Torah, students of truth, that we delight in all that he instructs. He shall unleash, you shall unleash the powers of hell. He shall cause every kind of religious tenant and every kind of offshoot to rise up. That's why among the damn heathens, you got the Jesus of every color, every dimension, uh, and every persuasion. Yoshua HaMashiach and the Echad. Not they, but Echad. One. And so you got the offshoots of all of these most despicable, damnable Christos. Well, who is the orchestrator of this? It is Almighty Yah, Yisrael. Yeah. He is the one that is orchestrating because he shall unleash. Hear me, I want you to shemak. And if I do not prove it out in the Torah today, then reject everything I say, all right? If I do not prove it out in the writings uh, of the Nabi. If any man speaks not according to the uh, Nabi and the uh, Edoth, the Edah, the testimony of Yah, is because there is no awe, there is no light in that man. There's no witness of the testimony of Yahshua in that man. Do you hear me? If any man speaks not, if any man utter not, if he does not uh, omir, if he does not speak, he does not utter, according to the powerful testimonies of Almighty Yah, if he does not speak in line by the constitution of the prophets, because he has no light at all in him. He's a damn deceiver. He's a liar. He has been raised up by hell, Yisraya. And if we as a nation of people, if we do not get understanding above all things, uh, woe unto us. Yah, Yahaz, Almighty Yahweh. He has unleashed the powers of hell for one purpose. 
for one purpose. For one purpose. To tread, tread upon, to devastate, to show hath, to destroy. In their spirit of Hamas, violently to destroy, not the wicked. Not those that oppose that kingdom, eh? but all those of the house of Israel that the boy here, the elect remnant, may come out of that. And that's a fact. And if it's not proven in the teaching today, then you run for the safety of your nephesh. You run. Now because we are not the Talmudim that Yah commands us to be students and pupils, a student learn. And a student is always learning. But we have become scholars. And we all have scholarship. And we know every damn thing. But yet we don't know a damn thing. We think we have the fullness of Yah's substance. And we really don't have a damn thing. And that's the truth. I'm going to teach today, preach. Of course, I may hollow. I may hara, crawl out. My neck may get thicker. And my arteries may protrude. There may not be sufficient oxygen to flow to my brain, but I have the ruach, the life of Yah. What is that life? The testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because he lives, because there is high, the life and the living power of that testimony in me that I can face tomorrow. We must prepare our minds this assault is against this Torahlessness mind the mind that is of abomination it is a mind Yisrael, that has no substance of Torah at all when one says they love Yah will not honor his Hashim and they damn the Shabbat and keep a damn pagan day they're full of their damn wickedness. They've already created the image of their damn God in their mind. They have already bowed down to that which produced nothing at all. And you can fraternize and, and be intimidated not to offend this damnable spirit of uh, the Edomites or the Edomites. You must understand, Yisrael, that this one, he knew that his birthright was robbed from him. And there has been an assault against Yaakov, Yisrael, from that day. And in the book of Obadiah, he explained that to great detail. That's why Yah says to us, don't mess with him. Don't mock him. And he has gone forth the spirit to mock Yisrael. So what has he done? Creating the image of his mind. The damn Christo. It is a damn lie. It is a damnable lie. And any man pursue that damn lie of Jesus Christ. You're going to die in your sins. It denies the name of the Abba. It denies the integrity of his son. He was not a damn Latin God or Greek God. He was not a damn American God. You see your damn American gods, Paris Hilton, Jazzy Z. Don't they call them stars? And then they show them how filthy they are. They call it the walk or the Hollywood walk of stars. And they put the names in the dirt that people spit on it and puke on it and trample on these damn beasts, the spirit of holotry. I can say one thing, that old Muhammad Ali, when they said, we want to put your name there, he said, hell no, you're not putting it on the ground. If anything, you put it up where they can see it, they're not going to trample on my name. And you see these sleazy Jezebels and these faggot, effeminate men. 
And they all love Jesus Christ. They all believe, I will, man. They all believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They all believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you raise up the name of your sure, there's a ruckus. There's a fight that ensues. They get quiet. Because they have no weapon tree to stand against that name. And these scarlets out of the gates of hell, these Hollywood whores, you see these trashy, sluttish whores bowing down on their knees to the ground. For someone can say, damn Paris Hilton, pa, and trample that whore's name. Hallelujah. It is the truth. Whether you buy it or not. And they call that fame. That their names are reduced down. That people walk on them and spit on it. The bombs puke on it. And that's not a word that I would call a man a bomb. I'm simply utilizing that to say that, that those that do not have uh, the necessities that you have, Yisra'ya. It is a generation that a mind has been created by the very dominancy of Esa, uh, Esau. And it has been done not only through its milchaya or its military might and power, but it has done above all by its ability to manipulate the mind. For this whole battle uh, is about uh, Shaha, the worship. The worship of the Most High. That's what this whole battle uh, is about. And that is one thing that Yaakov did. Uh, he robbed uh, Esav uh, of the rights of his heritage. You think this dirty bastard, his spirit, is not trying to rob Yisraya of the heritage? So it's created in this damn image of this faggot freak. I call it that. Yeah. I don't give a damn what you say, Yisraya. I'm not afraid. They have offended you all of these years. And we are cowardly. I'm a Gaba, a Gaba, a warrior. will fight for that which is right. And I fight for the Melchuts, the kingdom of Yah. I fight for the beauty of the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. So his birthright has been robbed from him. He has no heritage. Nothing but the mountain of the hair of Seir. That he sits in a high place and he watches. Isn't that the, the very characteristics of this nation? Satellites that are cluttering the very atmospheres. The sons of Yephthah. The, the satellites and the imagery, they can look right into your home today. And so he has with his great demise, as he has been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, just like Israel, to bring down his enemy. And he has raised up the gods, the lords, the Baptist God, the Judaism God, the Muslim God, the Kemet God, all the gods he has raised up. To give inspiration unto the hearts of a wicked man whose heart is Torahlessness. When a man's heart possess the intricates and the beauty of the mitzvah, the works of the Torah, the laws of Yah. And he is a man that manifests with great delight the substance of the mighty power of Torah. He will not poshach. He will not practice a revolt. A transgression against Yah to carry it out with a mandate in his mind to oppose Yah, Yisrael. He will not do that. He will not do that. And so the sons of Esau, Esa, they have gone forth into the four corners of the earth. They have been scattered by the same winds. These are the heathens. And they have projected themselves to be mighty. They are projected their image in the mind of man for one purpose. To find out, to ferret out the house of Yisra'ya. To divide, to separate, to conquer, and to overcome. 
The only way you conquer and the most powerful way to conquer is that you must divide. You separate our minds from the Torah, it's easy to conquer you, Yisrael. You easily conquer it. And so they got a Jesus of every damn persuasion there is. You can be the greatest of races and your Jesus serves you. You can be the most violent individual and your Jesus Christ serve you. Damn your Jesus. Damn your Lords. I will not, I will die saying that. You're going to awaken in hell. I know I'm going to awaken out of Sheol. The grave has no power over me. I'm going to get up. And that's a fact. I am going to get up, but not in the name of Jesus. When I hear the voice of Yah, when the melod of Yah, Karah, and I shall get up, the grave shall be open. And as they were singing, I shall rise again. Ain't no hell on earth can hold me down. I'm going to rise. And that's a fact. I want to directly assault that spirit today. It is your Yisra, Yah. We, we must understand that Yah, one of his most pronounced characteristics is what? Just ponder that for a second. One of the most profound characteristics of Yah is this. He is an ish. He is a man. He is a man. He is a man of war. He loves to fight. He can fight. As they would say in the days in the gathering of the hood, he's bad. And he's bad to the bone. He's bad. He's bad. He judges everything. Even your thoughts he judges. And so by the command of Yah, he has opened the gates of darkness. He allows messengers uh, to peer in. Not every man. Not everyone. He allows them to peer beyond the veneer and see. To warn, to warn, to warn, to warn, to warn. Period. To warn his people. For there is a death. There is a famine that's in this land. We have not seen the manifestation of it. Whereby every mind will assault Yah. But they have great respect for this damn Jesus. This beast, this dog of a thing. This faggot, effeminate, hippie of a freak. And those that are of the diaspora, they, you know, they paint a picture with a freak with long hair as well. It's no different. They just changed the color of his skin. He is still a damn freak. He is still a damn lie. No different man. You will not cause me to slow down. To die, my friend. And they have erected the same damn freak. You see them with this pictures. You see pictures saying this is Jesus. It is your damn Jesus. I tell you, there's a white Jesus, a black Jesus, uh, there's a Jew Jesus. Uh, we are Messianic Jews for Jesus. Uh, there's an Islamic Jesus. Uh, there's a Chinese Jesus. There's only one Yoshua Hamashiach. There's only one that was made. One word that was made. Flesh. And we beheld the very beauty, the very gadol of the only begotten one of the bosom that had been birthed out of the word. He was birthed out of the word. And we are the ones that have been birthed out of the word. He is the birth of the word. He came of the word. He was made of the word. And of that word, out of that word came Yisra'ya. The promises of Dabarim, the promises of Yah unto Yisra'ya, it will make sense. Well, you haven't read anything, don't worry. What I speak is of the Ru'ach, and it is the truth. You can't defy it. You cannot. Hallelujah. 
and don't come to meet with your, me with your little weak pedigree sayings. Don't come to me that way. Don't confront me. You may confront the other ones, but don't confront me because confronting me, you will be dealt a severe blow. I mean that. I don't have time, uh, Yusipia, for this immature pedigree that is proliferating in the world today. I like a man, a strong man, a geba. He fights, he is willing to fight for that which is of Torah. He lays down his life. That's what he does. He lays down his life. He fights. In death he fights. In life he fights. And so he lays down his life. Every man is not a giver. He doesn't understand the skill of military power and might. That's why there are many soldiers but few warriors. There are many soldiers but few warriors. And that's a fact. The warriors of Daiweed. One day I shall teach that. May I proceed from here? Oh God, we greet you all that have joined us. Maybe they are you that are the Jesus thumpers. You have fallen off, but that's all right. I come to speak to no one but to the house of Yisrael. And when Yah speaks, it is his Musa, his counsel. It is counsel proceed from him to correct, to rebuke, to reprove, to set in order that he may pay us a visitation. The other day, Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, our president, he flew to Afghanistan on the secrecy or the cloak of darkness. No one knew. No one. And as he arrived there, of course, there were only a few commanding men of power. And these Jezebels, they call themselves officers among men that this vile nation has promoted. It is unclean. It is vile. It is not of Yah. The woman was never sent to battle before Yah. Only the heathens do that. But Yisrael, Yah, Yah has always raised up mighty men among them. This is a vile nation. She is a nation that spews some of the most abominable to Abel, some of the most filthy types of worship there is. And you will see that even beginning this day and on tomorrow. The stadiums are full. The malls are full today. The shopping centers are full. The highways are busy. The gas station, the grocery stores, the Walmarts, they're busy today. And tomorrow will ensue the very same thing. This is about one thing, Israel. It's about the identity of the Most High. And these cowardly, weak men that say, Well, we don't know the name, but how in the hell you know the name Jesus? You give credence to that, you cowardly beast. There's a consensus on that damn twisted name. I don't make too many friends. I received an email from Florida this morning. It says, Rayak, I've been listening for a year. And finally, I write to you. It's not easy to swallow. That cast oil was not the best thing to swallow. Mm -mm. As long as it's sweet, we can swallow that. Oh, my granny would give us a bit of peppermint after we took it. So you had a little sweetness there. Prophesy, man, unto us smooth things. Don't tell us the truth. It is about Almighty Yah. It is about His Hamashiach. And about the boy here. I want to read to us today a plan that has been orchestrated by Yah. Has nothing to do with you, me. It all has to do with Him. And I want to begin here in the book of Revelation. The mark of the beast. 
the oath, the mark of the beast and of man. In the Yamim, to direct, to de guide the path, Yah has given us his Torah that speaks to us, Derecha, or the way. And it brings us into the way of his bosom and guides us. And here shall one rise up by the command of Almighty Yah that he may fulfill the purpose of Yah. You will understand as I conclude today. Beginning here in the book of Revelation, Gilyana, Revelation chapter 13. I want to, as I teach from this book here for a period of time, to bring about one resolution to understand this mark and why no man can buy and sell. We have been hoodwinked from hell. If you began at Bereshit or I began at Gilgana 1, you will see what this is all about starting at chapter 13 verse 1. It is about one thing. It is about worship. And I will go to this verse uh, and go back to that one. Uh, and it all will fit into its proper place when I am finished. That's why we must be the Talmud students and pupils to hear, to learn. And even if an ark preach on this, you garner that from that message that is associated with this Yisra'ya. I began here in the book of Gilead, Revelation chapter 13. And verse 11, Yochahan said, And I beheld my ozen, my ears, my ayen, my eyes were open. And everything that I saw, the brightness, the light, there is no disputing into what, as to what I saw. He said, And I beheld another beast. He saw this one rise up out this tannin, this one that is vicious, the one that has been raised up by the hands of Yah. He saw this one that has one purpose in his loins. And in order to understand this one that rose up, we must search the docket to see what the Nabi, the Nabi in the prophets has expressed about him. He must be identified. He must be. We understand this is the one that uh, is this false entity of hell. Uh, this anti-Hamashiach that rises out. Uh, come out of the debacle of hell. Uh, and a mind that is depraved. Uh, because Yah is rejected. And that's why we have seen this, uh, this urgency uh, and this missionary work throughout all the earth. Uh, to bring the people under this damned of a delusion of lies. This damned Jesus Christ. It's a damned lie. This is the very nature of the anti hamashiach Oh, he is Christ. What damned Christ is he? The word Christ in the Greek Christo is simply the anointed. Who is he anointed by? Who is this one anointed by? Well, in this little group, you, has, you have anointed him. In this little setting, you have anointed him. In that setting, you have anointed him. We must understand clarity definitives. What words mean? We can't be scholars because there's no scholar in here. And neither you that's listening as well. He said, out of the debacle of chaos and hell, a mind... That is opposed diametrically to the mind of Yam. It has not the lab of Yoshua HaMashiach. It has not permitted that mind to dwell and to guide them into, as the old ones would say, the deep things of Yah. It has not allowed that. He says, I saw this one rise up out of the chaotic debacle of the earth. He says, I saw him come up out of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, the Olam. And this is vital right here that we understand this. It says, and he had two kharim, two kharim, kharim, horns. You search the Torah, you will find that the kharim, it is identified with strength and power. 
He has two horns. Who is this? What does it represent? It represents one of the most powerful identities upon the earth, and that is the religious order and a religious political power as this vile nation, as it spews its religious self-righteousness, as it condemns nations that they perceive or they have uh, said that you are right or you're wrong, uh, and yet out of the political proudness of a nation like this, who can stand against it? Out of their military power, what nation can stand against it? It is a nation that tries to uh, usher its political and its religious views upon every nation, Israel. Look at this damnable twisted thing we call Christendom. Christianity. It has scoured the whole earth to promote this damnable faggoty feminine thing uh, they call Jesus. He is a freak. He is a freak. It is not your Shua Hamashiach. You defend that, then you will go to hell defending it. If you never heard it, you've heard it from this messenger. He rises up having to carry the power of strength and the power of might. The power of political, the power of military, which is associated with uh, political uh, because it is the political power in this nation, it is the political power in every nation uh, that controls uh, the policies uh, of the military might and dominancy uh, in every nation. Whether it is uh, what, whether it is anti, uh, there is a religious tenet there. Whether it's self-righteous, whether it's based upon one's nationality, one's race, as one would say, uh, one's skin complexion. Uh, you find that Yisraya, so he saw this beast, this false pseudo-prophet. He stands with his eloquent power and he speaks to allure and draw the masses. Isn't there one common denominator that you would hear? Those of the vile religion called Judaism. You will hear those that are the Islamic. You will hear those that are the Christianity. You will hear those that are the Buddha. You will hear those uh, that are the Zen. They all have one thing in common. There's a common factor there. And the word is G-O-D-D-O-G, -D -D the dog God. And they will all say, the Muslims say, we all serve the same God. Allah Akbar. They will say that we all serve the same God. I don't serve the damn God of the Muslims. I don't serve any damn God. I don't serve the damn God of the Christians. And so we have this common denominator among all religion and that word God. There are languages whereby the word God cannot even be enunciated. It has no credence at all. None whatsoever. There in the Philippines, the Sugula language, there is no word for God. So they associate it with the things that they have worshipped. You understand, Yisraya? But all of the major tenets of religion today, they have one common. Uh, and when Mr. Barack Hussein Obama invites them, he invites uh, the Buddhists. He invites the Jews. He invites the Muslims. He invites the Christians. Uh, he invites the major factors uh, of religion today. He invites the Hindus. And then there is the... And then above all, he invites the mother of holotry of all whores, uh, this thing we call Catholicism, this dirty slut, this vile, polluted whore that spreads her venereal disease uh, of a damn weeping Mary. She is not the Miriam of Torah, Hallelujah. of their punkish, little effeminate, faggot Christo. Listen, Yisrael, I have no set mandate when I come in here. What I will preach today, I got up this morning and looked at the Torah, and this is what I will preach. This was not something I studied at the beginning of the week. If it's wrong, run from me. You understand? I'm not going to, I'm not going to allow this spirit to offend my Abba. Your shoe is the one that paid the price. He did not come to a white America or a black America or a German uh, Goma. He came to the Hebraic people. 
And his name has not changed. And I'm not going to buy their lie. I'm not going to honor their damn lie. I'm not going to honor this damn thing they call Jesus Christ. I'm not Israel. His name is the most valuable thing that we possess. Because in that name we find all things in the power of that name. In the power of Almighty Yahweh's name we find the power of his Yosha, his Yoshua. He is Yosha. He is straight with us. I will not be intimidated. I don't give a damn if no one sends a nickel here. He supplies all of my needs. I saw this one that come up out of the earth. And he had two horns, two. He was like a say. He was like a lamb. Or they they pretend that they are so kind and sweet and nice. He was like a say a lamb. He was like one that was prepared for the zabach, the offering. The one that would be offered unto Yah. He was like that. He is offered. He is the offering unto Yah as well. I will show you how though. You must understand. We are ignorant. All of us. We just don't know. We don't. He was like a lamb. But he spoke as the Tani. He spoke as one that was false. Had no... Torah, conscience, or mind. A system that desecrate, destroys, annihilate anything that is consistent with Torah. Destroys the minds, the hearts, the very identity of the Abba in every sector of their society. This one having two horns. Well, for us to understand that, we must search the book. Isn't that so? And I know we as a whole, we don't know. We think we know, but we don't know. I would have begun. One of the most profound prophecies here in the book, it is out of the book of Daniel, Daniel the book of Daniel. And I would have begun here in verse 1. It's going to take a little time, but that's all right. We got time. It is yours, Shabbaton. And if there is not a clarity as to this one and what this represents, then don't come back. Don't even waste your time listening to this fool, all right? It says here in the book of Daniel, yeah, Daniel chapter 8, verse 1. Isn't Yah precise? He tells us in the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, and we dwell in a nation of such, whereby Baal protects the king, whereby the lords that protect the king. Every president of the United States, do not they call Mr. Billy Graham, has been uh, a stable there. Do not they call these religious harlots uh, to pray the blessings upon, that's what Be'el or Belshazzar means. That Be'el or the Lord protects the king. And so they will call Mr. Billy Graham. They will call the religious uh, fashions of the, of the United Snakes of Hell. And they will all embark upon the venture of what they call the White House. How arrogant. The place built by the backs of those... Uh, that bronze the labor of the hot sun and the dirty bastards uh, did not want to give recognition, uh, but hell, but they would give recognition uh, to someone like Bon and Cart that robbed and stole. And they would give them glamour. This is the twisted mind of this damn wicked nation. They will exalt Bon and Clyde. They will lift up Scarface and on the cocaine. And people watch that a thousand times. They will lift up Wild Bill Hickok. They will lift up those that massacred the Indians and destroyed those uh, in the land. Sure they will. Sure they will. But they will not esteem the name of Yah. So this one, as in that day, when Mr. President, he had this freak of a hog there, Rick Warren. 
to do the prayer. This faggot where fags roam the halls of those whorehouses. He had this one to pray the blessing because these men, believe me, they have a direct line with Jesus Christ. He talks to them. Be'er, the demons of darkness, they are dispatched to these men. They speak to the wick warrens. They speak to the grinning devil there in Houston. They talk with them. You understand, Yisraya? Austin. They talk to them. They talk to a hog like T.D. Jakes. The snake out of hell. They talk to them. Believe me when I say it. Zubair protects the king. Now this is what Daniel Yah saw, Yisraya. He says, in the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, he said there was a hazon, there was a prophecy of the oracles of Yah that entered into my bosom. They were visible, but I could not see them. He says, and not only that, but it ra'ah, it appeared unto me. It appeared unto him for what? For him to inspect. For him to do uh, an inspection and to see whether it was of Yah to inspect. Even to me, he said, even to me, even to me, Daniel, he said, after that which appeared unto me at the first. And he began to express what he saw. He said, and I saw in the Hazon, or in this vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was in Shushan. I was in the place of great splendor and elegancy where those, uh, the kings of Persia, where they would go to their palaces, uh, their palatial places uh, for the winter months and they would rest. Uh, we enter into a season, that's why Yahshua said, pray not, Yisrael, pray not that your flight be in the winter. Pray not that you have to run in the midst of the winter months. You understand uh, now, Yah had uh, even the Persian king here that, Yaka, that Daniel Yah could see the very relevance uh, of this which would be shown unto Yakahan uh, that he would reveal unto us. He shall reveal unto us. You just bear with me. You understand? You try to get to the conclusion uh, before you understand the process. And that's our nature. We want to get the conclusion fast, we don't want to go to the steps. You get a house or you have a house being built. You go out there every day to look and say they haven't gotten anywhere. Well, they've gotten the footing port. You go there three weeks later, you expect the house to be up. You go there two months later and say, what happened? You go there four months later and they, they haven't finished? That's the way we are. That's the way we are. That's the way we are. Not understanding the processes. No power in the house. No, no, no sheetrock. That's the way we are. So in order for you to understand how this house is built, you got to understand every component of this house. We began here this vision that your Kahan saw as well. He says, so he was at the Shushan in the palace, which is the province of Elam or eternity Elam. He said, and I saw in this Hazon the vision, uh, and I was by the river of Ullah. I was by the flowing waters of Ullah. We as a nation of people, if we are planted, if we do not, Yisraya, if we do not walk in the perverseness of the wicked, uh, let me get this for you. Hallelujah. This is what we shall be. Ah, uh, isn't that something? Open right up to the book. Yeah. To Helium 1. Yeah. It says, Barach is the man that walk not in the Musa, the council, after the wicked, after those that are vile. He says, nor stand in the way or the derrick of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scorn for those that mock the Torah, that mock the name of Yahshua, that displace his name with the damn pagan Jesus, Be'el, Lord. He said, but his hafiz, his delight, is in the Torah, the Torah, 
of Yah. And in his Torah does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. Planted by the Yam, the rivers of water. That bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. It shall it shall produce abundance. He was by the river of Ulan that his revelation, his wisdom, because he was one that walked and he delighted in the Torah of your everything is valuable. It is poignant for us to understand. And we must. We can't be in a haste to get to the conclusion. We must understand the Torah process. It is like one trying to lose a few pounds. And if they don't see the results on a day or two or three a day, they become discouraged, don't we? I know that one. And you will never do it because it's not going to be done that way. So it is with the Torah of Yah. It's not going to be done that way. It's a process. Hallelujah. So he stood there by the rivers, the place where the foam waters. And he says, then I lifted in verse 3 of Daniel Yah, then I lifted up my eyes. He says, and I, uh, I saw and behold. There stood before the river, he says, I saw this, uh, this ram or this beast. What is the ram? What does the ram represent? It always represents the sacrifice. When Abraham, when Abraham said, whatever your will is, Yah, when he took up Yitzhak to offer unto Yah, when he had laid back that, that weapon to make the blood flow, and then there was a cry in the bushes, in the thickets. It was Ram Yisrael. It was Ram. It's about one thing. It is about to, to establish a, a format of identity of worship. That's what it's all about. That's why one would not be able to buy or sell what uh, it's not what we think it is and how this whole has tricked our minds. I will prove it out. And if I don't prove it out, run from me, people. I mean that. Let me die in my wickedness and my blasphemy against you. Let me die as a dog in the street. I mean that. Save your house from this untoward wicked man. I mean it with all that's in me. Let him die the death of a wicked, hellish man. Die in his wicked ways. And his eyes shall lift up in the torment of hell. This is serious to me. It's not about a damn dollar bill. Or what we call riches. I want to live. I want to live. The findings of physicians and doctors and medicine cannot keep your life. In him we live. In your shall we move. And in him we have our being. We as a nation, we're going to have to one day establish our confidence of great uh, significance. That we trust Yah above all things. We trust Yah. Hallelujah. He said, I lifted up my eyes and behold, there stood before the river a ram. An iron. He said, it had how many horns does it have? One or two? It has two horns. We're going to bring light to this Yisraya, don't worry. He had two horns to reveal the strength and the might of the religious proudness and also the political power to make policy that man would adhere to. To make religious policies that man would adhere to. He says this one had two horns, which had two horns. And the two horns, he said, uh, and the two horns, uh, and the two horns, uh, they, they were gaba'a. They were high horns. Uh, they were horns uh, of arrogance and pride. They were not strengths of great humility, and that's what the horns represent. Uh, he said uh, that these were two horns, uh, and, they, uh, uh, and the two horns, uh, not one, but the two horns uh, were high. They were gaba'a. Gabia, Gabia. They were full of arrogance and deceit and pride. They were horns of hubris. Isn't that the strength of this nation? Isn't this a very prideful nation? 
Proud to be out of America. Damn America. I get goosebumps. I'm proud to be an American. He says, so two horns. What is the strength of this nation that she promotes? She sells to every nation. Her religious strength. Her religion of Christendom. Her damn pagan white-skinned Jesus. Her damn pagan white-skinned pale-skinned Jesus. Now you that may have a lighter complexion of skin, we need to eradicate that damn twisted word out of our vocabulary. Because there is nothing that is white. There is no white race of people. None whatsoever. No more than there is a black race of people. There is not. You don't defend a damn lie. And they've gone forth in the excellence of their whiteness. To maintain the whiteness. And they've sent forth the white Jesus. To create a damn image. In the minds of those that do not have substance. That this people are great people. They are powerful people. And they don't produce one damn thing at all. But death. Destruction and hell. Well I'm going to make it plain. That's all right. You don't have to buy it. Hallelujah. Let's get real. We're not here to defend white. We're not here to defend black. We're not here to defend Jew. We're not here to defend Greek. We're here to defend Torah. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said this ram had two horns and they were high. Simply that they were Gabiya. They were full of pride and haughty. He said, but one was higher than the other. And the higher one came as last. He said that was a kingdom power that was full of pride and arrogance. And we have seen those kingdoms, particularly what we call the Roman entity, the kingdom of the Roman Empire. And the same was said that the sun never sets on the kingdom of Rome because the expanse was so great in every corner of the earth. So the sun never set upon the province or the empire of the Roman kingdom. It was secured through butchering and killing. And the kingdom that shall rise up in this hour last, as we see the America, not the Americas, it is proficient in killing. It is proficient in destruction. It is the kingdom that is proficient in, in the dispensing of their God power, of their arrogance and their pride. They raise up some of the most sleazy of whores. Some of the most effeminate of faggots. And give credence unto them. And set before the nations of the people. These little punkish boys that call themselves rappers. Uh, and you have the corporate giants. These rich bastards uh, are getting rich. And they pump the filth into your mind. And they spread this damn corruption uh, into your mind. Uh, that you give credence unto it by securing uh, and buying. Uh, and they pimp these faggot boys like pimps. Uh, and then they will give you one like a jazzy Z. Let him keep a little money. That's a fact. You don't hear these fellows like Hammer. That was back in the day, Hammer. You don't hear, what's his name, 50 cents? I don't hear nothing of this cat. They raise them up like you raise up a litter of pups. And the weaker ones, then the the female dog will eat. She doesn't even allow them to live. And that's what they do. They eat them up in their way. The system, this powerful entity is all about worship. And they send forth these, these surrogates, surrogates of hell. Their minds have been created out of darkness. And all of their sayings are dark. They denounce Yah. And now you have this freakish lie that they call themselves Hebrews. And they're spreading every kind of vile, filthy stench out of the gates of hell. But they call themselves Hebrews. You understand? They call themselves Israelites. They are the sons of Esa. They're Edomites. You understand? You're trying to identify them by the pigmentation of their skin. That is such a damnable, silly way to identify. You go to Puerto Rico in one house, there is one as black as him. There's one as black as him. 
There's one that is brown like her. There's one that is a little lighter like her. And there's one who has the pigmentation like him. Whose hair is that way. Whose hair is that way. Whose hair is that way. Whose hair is this way. And then you have one uh, that is as tired as him in one family. In one family. Same daughter. And the dad is black as him, and the mom is black as him. The dad is black as him, and the mom is black as him. You damn fools. This is beyond your, your ability to perceive, to discern, and to depict. It takes a spiritual mind, a mind that has been nurtured in the Torah of Yah, mind that has been raised up. To project your Shua HaMashiach. And these pigs project Jesus, their liars. Jesus is a part of the scheme, Yisrael. As they were brought over on the ships, as they came into this nation in the streams, uh, and they all came by ships here. They all came by ships. They all came by ships. And as they stream in one of the most prominent things, the first thing, uh, the one that had a tentacles in these grounds was this whore over here in Rome. You understand? She had a tentacles here. And the first thing to bring them unto the godness or the god. This freak. Every god is a freak. And a damn thing a god can do for you. Only Yah can. There is no other way but through Yah. Oh. There's no other way, but in your shua there is no other way. You may try your thief. You come as your father, hallelujah. Let me proceed because I want to ingrain this in your mind today. I want you to understand that, this teaching today. He said, and the one and the higher one came up last. There was an entity, a nation, there were nations of power, and yet this one that came up last... He was powerful. What nation has been as powerful as this nation? What nation has had the aggressiveness of their political system to spread to every corner of the earth? Tell me, please. What nation whereby even they call them missionaries uh, have gone into the deepest and the darkest of place uh, to spread one of the most formidable lies of hell, uh, the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Lord God, God, tell me, Yisraya, to bring this image of this freak out of hell. This little effeminate thing that masquerade around. That's why you find every kind of damn wicked thing there. You, you find it among the pedophilia and the pedophiles of the Messianic Judaism. You find it among the, uh, the Jews. You find this pedophilia. You find this wickedness. But you don't hear that in the news, do you? You fought it among these whole houses. Uh, you fought it among the church of God, the church of God in Christ. Uh, the Baptists, the men uh, are raping their daughters. They're seducing. Uh, they're raping them like they're dogs. It's wrong. You fought it among these liars. They call themselves Hebrews, uh, full of their damn lust. Uh, these fat beasts, uh, these lazy ass men can't even take care of a wife. Uh, and they want four or five. Uh, and then they have them out working. It's wrong. It's wicked. And they're big belly men, uh, greedy, uh, insecure. It takes a man to handle uh, a wife. You understand? It takes a man. It takes a man to handle a wife. Who can find one? For price is far above rubies. She's a woman of strength. In the heart of the man thus safely trusts in her all the days of his life. She will do him no evil. I'm in attack mode. They attack me. I don't give a damn about them attacking me. They attack my Hamashiach. And I will die for that. Let me bring this out to us, all right? I don't want to get sidetracked. Hallelujah. I don't even know why I'm going this way. But Yah knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the one that came us last, it was great. It was most powerful. It, it had even more Gabo'ah. Verse 4 of Daniel, Yah 8, 4. He said, I saw this ayil, this ram. Now, I want you to notice which way he pushes, all right? It's valuable to understand this because we will understand the reason why as we go. And I saw this ram. I saw this powerful kingdom. I saw this entity of great power. I saw it push westward. It went 
north, it went southward, not eastward. It went westward, it went northward, and it, then it went southward. Why not eastward? We'll hold that for you, all right. I'll prove it in the end. He says, so that no beast, no tenny, no nation, no power, no beast might stand before this incursion. Who can stand before this last beast? Can your religious power? They will chew you up and grind you up and spit you out. Can your military power, can your political system? They bring down political systems. They destroy them. They dismantle them. They dismantle your principles. Uh, they rob you of anything that is decent uh, and honorable. Uh, yes. Your heart began to wax cold. And you began to be filled with all the own iniquity. Uh, a mind that is Torahlessness. It is all about the mind. It is about, all about creating the, the spirit of worship in the mind. And when the mind has not the order of the Torah, it is the mind that is loose. It is susceptible to every kind of disease. If we're not immune, that's how we immune ourselves by the Torah. And if we're not immune, then we're susceptible to the diseases of darkness. We're susceptible to the keli, keli, the clothing, the diseases of darkness that will clothe and cloak our minds. And we will believe a lie. We will believe the lies that are uttered. No nation, no beast could stand before him. Neither was there any... That could deliver out of his hand. No one. No one could deliver one out of the hands of this mighty ferocious power. Who can deliver you out of the hand of this nation? Only Yah can, Yisra'ya. Our minds are. Our minds are overtaken in this nation. They're trained to go against Yah. Our thoughts are trained to despise Yahshua. Our actions are based and predicated upon that which is deceit and full of wickedness. And we can do wrong and we think we're right. And the reason we do that because we're making offerings unto hell. It's all about offerings. It's all about, did y'all, did, did, did y'all like the offerings of Yisrael God when they were full of deceit and lies and corrupt? He said, why would you bring this damn thing before me? Why would you bring a prayer offering before me? Uh, you have not gotten it right with the Ark Neoholt. Uh, and you come before me. Uh, the powers of hell say this is mine. They offer that unto me. And we think we know and we don't know. That's why we must examine our hearts. That's why we should not let the sun go down upon our wrath. Uh, our wickedness. We must not allow that. Hallelujah. No man is able to deliver, no one, neither was there any in verse 4, any that could deliver out of his hands. Listen, this was amazing when I read this this morning. But he did according to his roson. According to his will, his roson, his pleasure, his delight in his favor. You understand this is a nation. That says, uh, well, Yah gave us a free will. Of course, they're God. And this God, and the power of this kingdom, it says you do according to your rason. Not the hafiz of Yah. But he did according to his ra ra son, According to his delight. According to his will. We are a nation of people we're always doing according to our will and our might. And our strength, we have horns like a ram. Our strength is my own personal, me, myself, and my own agenda, and my own religious right. You can't tell me. They will tell you that two things in this nation you don't talk about on jobs. Political and religion. I don't care what job you've been on. You that have worked in the job force, they will tell you, don't discuss your political views. And don't talk about religion. Those are the sacred cows. Those are the sacred cows. Once you began to dab into the religious aspect, uh, then whoa, you're going to offend someone. Once you began to, uh, you began to express your political uh, uh, views, uh, then you're going to offend one because uh, he's a Bush fan, you're an Obama fan. Uh, he's a Kennedy fan, uh, and you're a Nixon fan. Come on, Israel. 
And that's the street. These are the horns of this nation. Doesn't a ram rise up when a small ram tries to encroach upon the harem? He rises up. What he uses? His horn. So you use your religious horn. And then you use your political horn. Yes, we do, Yisraya. And that's what we, everything today is steeped in religion and political. Everything. I don't care what you see in this nation. The wealth comes from its religious and political system. Everything is steeped in the religious and the political mind. It's not a mind that is steeped in the, in the, in the Torah of Yah. In the ways of Yah. And no one could, once this power... And what's this mindset once this, uh, you notice that he went in a direction. And that is what this mark, this, uh, this Yamim, uh, it is to go in the direction of. He has the mark of Yah. He has the mind that Yah has put there, that he would go in the way that Yah has directed. You understand? He did not give a damn. He did what Roson, what pleased him. And we don't give a damn what Yah say. What he says, we do what pleases us. The way this seems right unto man. What please us seem right. We don't give a damn. But that's all right. When I finish, you'll understand why you don't give a damn. You'll understand why you're doing. He did what was pleasing in his own sight. Hallelujah. Which was pleasing unto him. And it says, and he became great. And it uses the word Kadol here. He became great. Strength and power. Honor. He became God all. He became great. Uh, what a nation that began to trek westward. Sure it is. Began to trek westward. And it has become great. It has robbed. It has torn. No one could stand against it. And those that were the indigenous people here, when they shot their bows and arrows, it could not withstand the cannons and the powder. It could not withstand the diseases that were brought upon the land. That clothe him. That's why the word keli, diseases and keli. That's why when the Torah talks about a woman not wearing the garments of a man, it's talking about the keli. He or she that do it so is an abomination unto Yah. That you dress yourself in a disease like that. You may not buy, but it's still the truth. You will find out. You will find out. You will find out. Hallelujah. But you know there were those that were here, they dressed like pure sluts and whores now. You can be cowards, but I'm not cowards. The women dress like slutty whores, their daughters. Never bothered that, Yisrael. Damn old stinking woman think that she's going to know. Who wants to give me? I, I would rather have a woman 500 pounds. If she's clean and she bathes, I would rather have a wife like that. Than to have one that stinks and she can be 115 pounds. A stinking dirty woman. Breath stinks. I wouldn't have it. These old stinking, crazy, ignorant women. They've never taught their daughters to be bath of Tizayon. As the mother, so is the daughter. Hallelujah. He became great. He said in verse 5, And as I was discerning, as I was understanding, he says, See or behold, he says, an as or a male goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. Did not this beast come from the west? Sure it did. This Americas is west from Europe. He came, did he touch the ground? He sailed across the waters. It says it did not even touch the ground. It did not even touch the ground. The boat didn't touch the ground. It touched water. You go that way, you're going western. You're going western. You're going to western Europe. You're going that way. It came uh, and the spirit, he discerned this, uh, this male goat, this offering. Uh, this offering out of hell. Came from the west of the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn, one like a unicorn, had a notable strength between his eyes. Just one horn, didn't have two, just one, just one to establish the might of the kingdom of hell. It had one of military power to kill, to kill, 
to kill and kill. To kill, to kill all of you damnable revisitists. You can revive what you call history, history all you want to. But it's a fact. You can delete out of that the very atrocity of slavery and what things have happened through the centuries here. You can do that all you want to and they are doing that. They're doing that, but it's one thing that the Jews will not allow them to do. Uh, they're not going to allow them to forget hol uh, Holocaust. Uh, they're not going to allow them to forget that. And the same damn Jew will say, well, that was then. Uh, hell, that what you experienced was then too. Are uh, your forefathers as well? Talk to me. But the Jews will not allow them to forget hol uh, Holocaust. They will allow them to forget Adolf Hitler. Don't you know there are countries, if you mention the name of Araf, Hitler, you will go to jail. They just arrested this ball player in New York because, and they charged him with a hate crime. Because he spoke or he said something, damn you, or get out of my face, you damn Jew. They arrested him for a hate crime. They arrested this baseball player because they said he assaulted Listen, he did not physically, he did not hit because he cursed a Jew that had on his yarmulke and they put that man in jail. And yet down there in Florida, that bastard, that Jew, he killed that kid and no one, hell you will not even heard about it. Let's get real, let's deal with that, let's deal with that which is wicked, confronted. Don't be afraid. You shouldn't call people mamzi bastards. Well, they have not the father. My natural heritage, that's what I was born as a bastard. Born out of wedlock. I'm not ashamed of that. So what? So what? I bless you all for Bithynia Davis. Her name was Bithynia. By B Y T H E N I A. Kind of odd name for those days, wasn't it? But that was her name. Bithynia. Hallelujah. To the Yafu. Yah, you know, brought you for that woman that birthed this Zira. Hallelujah. Can I proceed a little further? All right. This is no story tale here. This is true. This is no fiction. You must understand this in the spiritual realm. He had one notable horn between his eyes, verse 6. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing by the river. And it ran to him in Hema, in fury, in anger, in ath, in Hema of his power. And I saw him come close to the ram. And as he moved with bitterness against him, you must understand, even though this ram, it represents the offering of Yah. And the offering of Yah, it is, it is, uh, it is opposed bitterly today. You go to a place and say, hallelujah to the lamb of Yah, Yahshua, Hamashiach. They don't mind if you say, quote, praise the Lord God, Jesus Christ, unquote. And so this spirit today, this, this spirit that as it's, it batters with great bitterness uh, against the offering uh, of uh, those that are the elect of Yah. And because we are so damn wicked, because we defy Yah, because you integrate uh, the very beauty of Yah with some of the most damnable pagan things, uh, there's a result to that. You can't say what you want to. Why Yah will never allow that. We don't know Yah, Yisrael Yah. It's one of the first things that Evangelist Hartsville taught me, the word no. He didn't even know. He doesn't know even to this day what he taught me. And he has not expanded upon it the way Yah has caused me to expand upon that word no. Just that one little simple word, no. K-N-O-W. He said, I saw this ram, uh, verse 7, I saw this, this ham come close to the ram, uh, and he moved with bitterness against him, uh, and he smote the ram, uh, and he break off his two horns. He broke off the power of his political system. I saw this goat, this one rise up, this ram, rise up. 
And I saw this mighty power, this one that would be the ultimate offering or the sacrifice unto the deities of hell. This one that had the strength, the power, that it was all self, it was in one being of one body. This one that would oppose everything that is of Yah. The one that would decapitate and break down every system uh, that is not based upon one principle system. system uh, and that is all nations united under the power of darkness. Uh, that they oppose the Torah, oppose everything that is of the Torah of Almighty Yah. He said, I saw the power in the ram that stand before him. Uh, but he cast him down to the ground uh, and he stamped. Look, listen, and he trampled. He stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hands. He stamped or he trampled upon him. Now this is dealing with the kingdoms. And you'll understand as I conclude. It's dealing with what we call the, uh, the Medo-Persian kingdom and the Grecian. We're talking about, we saw how the Greece, how the kingdom of the Medes and the Perd. It was one of the most fabulous, what they call one of the most fabulous renaissances upon the face of the earth. And all of a sudden you saw what we call the Grecian or the, Greek, or the kingdom of the Greeks. Whereby they had gone and stole and robbed and stole from cultures uh, and robbed from the universities of other nations. Especially on the continent that we call Africa or Africa. They had robbed and they had stole and they incorporated that into their booty. Isn't the first thing, if you listen to anything about the war of Iraq. When they went into Iraq, the first thing they began to do, the very first thing, my, uh, my host, they began to steal the artifact. They began to take the, 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 the arch and they began to get that out of the country. Did you all see the picture of the day that sold for $19 million? What a damn shame! They call that art! I get the babies that I do better than that. Did you see that picture? I wanted to bring it and let you see that. A piece of damn trash that sold for $19 million? I said, what a damn shame. Come on, my bad. This is what this nation, this is what they call art. This is what they call art. This is what they call culture a silly looking woman with a mouth open streaming is the name of the painting and they paid night what jackass spent 19 million dollars for that i said what a damn shame how wicked how stupid is this nation i mean just little swirls of line and paint just silly stupid i could get any of these little babies and they would do a better job it was a child because it was a child's drawing. Because this nation has a child's mind. It has a naha, a little boyish mind. Like to play in mud. Like to run in the creek. Like my little friend back there. He'd rather dig in the creek. He'd rather, he'd rather get wet and dirty. He, he has an inch of dirt in his socks and in his shoes. It doesn't bother him a bit at all. Dirt in his head and his fingernails, he's digging, he's stretching. He'd rather take a shower because shower doesn't get much off. Take a bath, oh, I take no bath, let me take a shower. That's the truth. And we don't want to wash in the dam and the living water. We must wash in the. He didn't say take no shower. Come and wash. We must wash ourselves, Israel. Our minds must be washed. We got to bathe. Shower's not bathing. We must wash ourselves from all the filthiness. Cleanse ourselves from the fit filthiness of our flesh and the spirit that's in us, Yisraya. Hallelujah. 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 And he stamped upon him and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hands. That was none. We see the destruction of the medial Persian Empire by those that we call the Greek. And that was the very catalyst of Esau, of these wicked individuals, that he began to cause the resurrection of his godlikeness to arise. So he produced this little effeminate faggot picture we call Jesus Christ. That's what he came out of. Well, the Greek for his name, damn the Greek. Damn the wickedness of the Greek. 
They have the wicked way. They have stole. They have robbed. And they don't want to deal. People don't want to deal with that. They have stole. They have. They. They. They're not inventors of any. Inventors of anything. They rob out of the continent of Africa, out of the great uh, 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 Alexandria, the, the the universities there uh, uh, in Egypt and, and throughout that continent. There were pillagers and plunders. Isn't that what America did when they went to, to that nation? Uh, they plundered it of its arts and its artifacts. Show me the arts of America. Show me anything. Show me the great culture of America. Show me 275 plus years. Show me anything that's worth anything. Please show me. There's nothing there. Nothing you can find. They've given you Elvis Presley, the Beastly Boys, uh, and James Brown. Show me Yisraya. They take songs like Beethoven and say, oh, this is, this is something that is monumental. Hell, it's not monumental. It's because you say it's monumental. The best music, uh, no one can play those chords because you do not have the tenderness uh, to music to understand. That's the truth, Yisraya. It's a fact. Because you promote it and say that it is some of the best music ever. Because you say that. You, oh, you must be intellectual to understand Beethoven and Bach and Schofar. You arrogant beast. And you don't even understand the chords. You can't even read music. And yet this arrogant, beastly, wicked mind. I'm coming with this today. Don't worry. Just stay with me, you that are listening. He says uh, in verse 8, he said, Therefore, therefore the male goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken. His strength, his power was deleted. And for it came up four notable ones, and they went toward the four winds of the earth. And history, if you do a little research on this, I didn't have time this morning, but it will show you that this is what came out of the Grecians, the Medio Persian type empires, uh, as we saw what, we, what they call Alexandria, the kingdoms, uh, even what they call Africa, that is what they say the nation or that continent was named after Africa, one of the generals in the Roman Empire. I don't know. Uh, you have to be careful with what you read, but also the word Africa means uh, it doesn't freeze. Uh, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't freeze. It's always hot. That's what it means uh, as well, Yisraya. So these were the four, four commanding powers uh, that went forth into the four corners of the earth uh, to challenge uh, the four, uh, to challenge the very spirit of Almighty Yah, to challenge it, to challenge it spiritually, uh, and they've gone forth into the four corners of the earth uh, to establish one thing, uh, into some of the most darkest crevices of the earth uh, to establish one thing, that's Jesus, uh, that's Jesus, yes, the Lord God, this is a damn lie. For one purpose, to bring everyone under this order of religious, uh, of religious recognition, that's what it's all about. Listen, Yisrael, yeah, there's always been a one world order. It's always been corrupt. Show me one government that is not corrupt. Show me one that is right. Show me one that is based upon the principles of Torah. Because it says totalitarianism or communist, it's the same as, uh, uh, as, the same as uh, a capitalist or democracy. You as the people, democracy is where the people rule, right? You think you rule in this country? You got a few twisted minds up there in Washington, D.C., uh, that they are controlled by the powers of hell. Uh, they twist and the law books have millions of laws on it. It takes a lawyer to search out a record to find a law or stipulation whereby you can uh, take advantage of it. It's stupid. The Torah has 16, 30, 613 laws. 613 laws. Uh, that's not hard to remember, is it? Even the children can count that far now. Little one of the day began to count backwards and she smiles and went at me, at me and said, you didn't think I could do that, huh? Well, I can count backwards farther than you. I can start from a thousand. That would have just shot her out of the waters then. I can start at 100. I can start at 100,000 and count backwards. Hallelujah. Can you do that? But she was so impressed with her that she wanted to let me know and then she smiles. That see what I've done? Surprise you didn't I? 
That's why she did it. It was not arrogant. She did that to let me know you didn't know I could do this, but I can. I got something on you. You have nothing on me, little one. I can count backwards as well. Before you were born, I could count backwards. Hallelujah. And so this, as we see in verse 8, uh, he waxed strong. We saw this Roman entity, this power. We saw this Grecian power, the, the, the Greece, uh, the kingdom of the Grecians, or, or this renaissance of Greece. Uh, how that we see today in all of the historical writings uh, that they were such a great people. And out of that we see the power of this Roman entity. And whereby those that were part of that, they were scattered uh, into the four corners of the earth. For what reason? Has not Yah scattered Yisrael into the four corners of the earth? Yeah. Are these not, are, is this not the spirit of demons and powers of darkness to work against Yah? Sure they are. These are not spirits of righteous men. Not at all. Hallelujah. And this is vital right here. I want you to understand verse 8, verse 9 and 10. He says, and out of one of them... It came a little or a mitzera, a little horn, a horn that's insignificant. It has no great power, small thing. There came a little horn that rose up this, this one, small, not big, but insignificant, a little horn. And this horn here, Yisra'ya, it represents that Mine, that one that shall arise, that is anti-Hamashiach, that is anti-Yoshua Hamashiach, not anti-Christ. The world is not anti-Christ. It loves Christ. The world loves Christ. Those that call themselves Hebrew Israelites, black Hebrews, they love Christ. They love Christ. But they despise Yoshua Hamashiach. And I damn their Christ. He said, out of all of the kingdoms that we see the power or the proliferation of the spirit scattered of these four powerful entities, uh, scattered, uh, we see the political, we see the political social, we see the religious, uh, we see the very powerful mercantile, uh, the systems of the world. Are not these the powers that rule the world? Uh? The mercantile, merchandise, we see the spirit of religious, or the religious power. We see them in the, if you call them, we see the religious Spirit and also the political social system. And we find all of that in the four corners of this America right here. We find it all, Yisraya. These things, as Yokohan, what he saw, spoke to Yokohan days. They must be revealed unto us. You will not understand what Yokohan saw unless you understand the very light of what Daniel saw. You must understand that, Yisraya. He said, And there was one that rose up this little horn, this anti Hamashia. Which wax, listen now, look at the words that Yah use here. Wax exceedingly great. Listen now, see, toward the south again, and now it is toward the east. I read it was northward, southward, and westward. And now this one, he waxes great toward the east. So we did not see that toward the east. What comes from the east to this nation today? They, they call it China, the great dragon. The isn't she called the dragon? Are that is not that called the eastern part? Sure it is. And now we see the power. Of this who is rising greater than any nation? Those nations of the east today, Israel. We see China that uh, her her military power. America mocked her the other day because she sent up a, a a satellite, and they said that it didn't function. It did not reach its orbit. This is the way of propaganda, you understand? Within a few years, they're saying 20 years, but within a few years, her, her economy always already has surpassed this one. Her money is, and, and, and Mr. Ding is saying to Obama, damn you, you're not going to push us around, all right? You're not going to tell us about human rights when you have no human rights over there. Look at this Trayvon Martin now. Now you talk about human rights? Let's deal with that. As Bonhoeffer says, as he says to him, well, uh, for, for you to be the, the aristocrats, uh, you have a concern for the Negroes, huh? He says, yes, yes, I do. When any people suffer, when, when they suffer without a cause, they, they suffer when, when they have done nothing. Do I do? 
You see the dull, the only, the poor, you don't stand up for them, woe unto you, Yisra'ya. You stand up for the poor, I don't give a damn what color his pigmentation is. You stand up for the poor, you don't identify with some damn white skin or some black skin. You identify with the king of kings. Damn pukey flesh. Hallelujah. 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 He says, and I saw this one out of him, this little horn. And then I saw him spread his tentacles toward the east, south, and toward the east, and toward the bountiful land. The bountiful land. This is the land of bountifulness, isn't it? Sure it is. China has people power, 1.6 billion. India, 1.2 billion. Pakistan, 1 billion. They all go into hell. Just a small remnant. Few. I don't buy it, man. Well, when I finish, you will buy it or you will call Yah a liar. Hallelujah. He says, and it waxed great. Even to the hosts of Hashem am. And it cast down some of the hosts of the stars. Now we know who that's been. He was cast down with the hosts of the stars. I know this is figurative. But this is the very order and the dysfunctionality of HaShatan. When he was cast down with the stars of the Melechim. Those that bring the light of Torah or God the light of Yeshua HaMashiach. He saw this one and he, he waxed great. Even of the hosts of the heavens, even uh, those that have been cast down out of Hashem I am, uh, and he was cast down some of the hosts of the stars to the ground. And this is what happened. And trample or he salah, he stomp upon them. You must understand that this little horn or this one shall rise up. Can I ask you a question, Yisrael? It's difficult to get things through to us because. We love to play and we were easily distracted. Is Yoshua Hamashiach the son of Yah? Was he birthed by the Zira? These false, wicked people that uh, say that it was an act of uh, adultery. There are people that say that. So they denounce Yoshua Hamashiach. The big fat bastard that stood here that said, I had no love, he denounced Yoshua Hamashiach. You understand? Said he's a joke. No, that fat hole, I call him a bastard. Because you cannot have the father if you deny the son. You deny the son or you deny the father, you have not the son. You understand? And I will not regard a pig like that. I will not break bread, bread with a dog like that. I will not embrace a dog like that. You can, but I will not. Hallelujah. And so if you're sure how much of Yah is this about then this one that shall rise is of the seed of Hashatan, this anti Hamashiach, this anti Hamashiach. It has been birthed by the very nature of Hashatan. And Hashatan had his inroads, uh, and the power of his inroad uh, is through the very mind of Edomite, of the Edomite. And so the Edomites control, it's amazing that those, uh, isn't it amazing that those that call themselves Hebrews, uh, Hell, you can't even get a collection of them together and, and say, here are some scholarly ah, that are wise men in Torah. Let them refine this book. And we print a book. You understand that? These are weak men. Give me $50,000. Someone has 50000 senator, And give me one year. I will work overtime and I will have it done within one year. You understand? I will have a, a, a Torah, a scripture, a chatuv, a katve that is easy to read uh, with, with, with no opinion of mine, no, no interpretation that is private. Uh, and they call themselves Hebrews uh, and they believe in the same damn Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and then they will say, well, of course, you know that King James was a man of, he was a black man. And of course the white ones say that he was white. Uh, and they think it's based upon their damn dirty stinking flesh. They're filthy pigs. I don't know. I may not be feeling it today or what, huh? Feeling all right, but that's all right. Hallelujah. I will show you at the end why I'm talking like this. You'll understand. 
He said, in this one, he will trample, he will trample, stamp upon them. I want you to hear this concerning this. Who, who will be trampled? I want to show you something. Salah or rejected. Turn quickly. Hold that in Revelation. We're going to go back there. But there are two things I want to show you here. Concerning this word, Salah. And shall trample, shall tear down, shall destroy, shall reject. Listen to this. And to Helium, Psalms 119 and 118. Yah says, this is what we said. This one is coming to trample down, this one of hell. Who is he coming to trample? Now let us examine to understand what this trampling or this salah is all about. It says in Psalms 119, 118, is that we said to Yah, you have trodden, you have trampled. You have rejected, you have torn down, you have so long, you have torn down all of them. All of them that the sugar. Not some. Does it say some? You better hear this. You better hear what the book says. Do you hear what Yah is going to do? He calls this spirit, this nation, this kingdom, this power to rise up, to trap. To trodden, to solar, to reject, to be down. We must. Who is Yah going to give to lead his people? Someone that is a baby that is just drawn from mama's titty milk. There are boys out there that, uh, you know, they're still sucking their mama's titty. I will, man. They're titty boys. They're not men. Well, I got mama, I don't want to feel mama. There's one thing as a young 22-year-old man, when y'all began to deal with me in all of my ignorance, I knew then. I knew then. Didn't have to have no teaching. I knew then. I knew then. I knew then mama's place. And I said to her some years as I had learned, I said, don't forget, you're my ima. And I regard you as that. And I honor you. But I am the man. I am the man. I am the man. You're my mother. But I am the man. Sure. And so this one is sent by the command of Yah to trample, to root out. Now listen, we must understand the pattern in order to understand what shall transpire. That we said here into Helium, 119, 118. He says, you, he's talking to Yah, isn't he? He said, you have sola, the same word, trotten, trampled, rejected, dejected, destroyed. You have, you have uh, trodden down. Does it say cola? Does it say all? Come on, Zakin Yaramaya. He brings that out, out to us all the time. It is the voice. It is all. It is the whole. It is the fullness. It is the substance. It is the totality. He has trodden down who all, 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 your mama, your daddy, your godmama, your children, all them that air, that shagal from your, who come from your statues. And the mind is being trained to trample down and trodden the statues of Yah, the ordinance, the mitzvah, the Torah of Yah. You got to love everybody, and yet they don't love Yah. It says Yah has trampled down. I want you to remember that. Because I will show you how that this one that shall come shall trample down. What he's going to trample down. How he's going to destroy just to get to the field. All that say they're saved, they're not saved. You can't tell me you, 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 you're serving Yah. You have the Yah Shachav Yah. And you, you come with the same damn folly every day. You're mean as a damn hell, hell hound. You're not kind, you're not gentle, you're a damn liar. You're a wicked liar. I don't want that false grinning, conniving, devilish little possum grin that you think you're right. I, don't give me that. There's one thing that I can't do is let discern this false, falseness of individual. You don't get by, you think you're getting by. Mark, a perfect man, a man that is told me, for the end of that man is Shalom. Mark, a perfect, a hold of Yisra'ya. You'll find Shalom. Did not he tell us the Uthra Mark? Hallelujah. 
Make sure you remember that and hold that. Just mark it there. And also the book of Ibrahim, Hebrews 10.28. Hallelujah. Don't, don't get to, Come on, just stay with me, Yisrael. He says here in the book of Hebrews 10.28. Yah says, He that despised Moshe's Torah died without mercy. He that despised Moshe's Torah. Hebrews 10 and 28. He that despised it. He that hated the Torah Moshe died without, without the Raham or the Hasid of Yah on the two or three witnesses. So he asked us, now listen now, it's all about this. Y'all must hear me now. It's all about Torah. If we do not give honor to his name, we, must, we cannot take the name of Yah and Shav. We cannot displace his name with a damn corrupt name, Jesus. It's a damn lie. It's a damn lie. It's a wicked lie. It's a lie. He said, he that despised Moshe's Torah, who was written on stone, I've written this in your bosom, like Yisra'ya, he that despised that they die without mercy. It didn't need 20 witnesses, only need two or three. Men that were accountable, that were recognizable, men that had the Ruach HaKodash, men that were accountable even unto themselves, and that when they spoke, it was accurate. They died without the Raham. Without the tender love kindness of Almighty God. They died without any consideration. If there were two witnesses said this one has defied the hukam of Almighty God. They died without any kind of mercy. So he says to us, you must remember these two when I conclude. I will show you why they're vital. And he shall, he has trampled down. Trample, he shall trample down. Even the hosts of the heavens are going to identify this one with his ferocious power. Oh, how much more sore punishment? Suppose you. No, suppose you. You. You, 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 you. Suppose you shall be thought worthy who has salah, we have trampled, we have trotten, we have sped upon, we have trampled underfoot the son of Yah, you have despised the name of Yahshua. You have despised that name for damn pagan. Who have trampled on the foot the son of Yah. And has counted the dam of the blood of the Brit the covenant. By which he has made. By which Yahshua. By which the power of Yahshua. By which the power of Yahshua. Hallelujah. We're going to overcome by the words of our testimony, or the words of the testimony of Yahshua, and we love not our lives unto the death, Yisrael. That is the ball here. How much more sore punishment uh, suppose those that are worthy who have solar trump on the foot of the Son of Yah? That's kind of the dam of the covenant by which he has made Kadosh, the things that are clean and pure, which he has made Kadosh. A common thing. And not only that, but have done despite unto the ruach of free unmerited hava and the favor of Yah. How much more so punishment you think we're going to receive if we trample on the foot the name of Yah? We trample on the foot the Torah of Yah, the statutes of Yah. How much more so punishment? How much more? How much more when you say the Shabbat is not relevant? His name is not of importance. And you continue to go to your whole house. It's all a part uh, of this anti-Hamashiach spirit. And they're against Yah. They love God, but they're against Yah. Their gods are dirty dogs. They're dirty bastards. They're unclean. And they have taken this unclean thing that they call a God. That has, been, uh, that has been created in their own love, in their own mind. Uh, and they have denounced and trampled on the foot. The very dumb. They have spit on the dumb of Yahshua. And said it's not even worth hogs or hogs blood. What kind of punishment you think that uh, we are going to receive? Uh, he has caused this one to rise up uh, and to trample out all nations and power. He shall rise up in the spirit of his father of Hashatan. Excellent power. I will show you as the weeks come what he shall do and how he shall operate he shall cause the mind of man to gravitate and to lay hold and to love him who shall I give you Barabbas Yoshua HaMashiach who shall I give you Yoshua Jesus give me Jesus kill the name of Yoshua dishonor the name of Yoshua you be ashamed of the name of Yoshua I'm not ashamed of his name. I won't stop. I won't get quiet. 
The very nature of Esau has proliferated this damn lie. And Yisrael is too damn ignorant to understand that Esau, the sons of Esau, the command that control, he's a hunter. He was a hunter. He knows how to hunt. And a hunter is stealthy. A hunter is conniving and slick. A hunter understands the very nature of the deer and tracks it down. A hunter is accurate. A hunter doesn't waste a bullet. These are, can speak to that degree. Even if you're a big hunter. He's been hunting for a long time. I've been running for a long time. I'm not tired yet. I've been running, running, running for a long, long time. I've been running, running. I'm not tired yet. See, a hunter doesn't get tired. In the nature of Esau, he doesn't get tired. He's hunting out that one that's robbed him. You understand? He has bl- can, can I ask you a question, you hunters? Can I ask you a question? Even you beginners, novice, newbie, you steal my shore, all right? You steal my ox. Can I ask you a question? Does a hunter that is proficient, does he camouflage himself? Does he blend? You're not going over there with a pink outfit on and Put it on you, St. Pierre Cardin. Talk to me. You want to smell like him. You get a little funk deer oil and you put that on you. Talk to me. You don't go there after you're taking a bath and you, you, you got your cologne on. And you, got, and you don't want to do that. You want to be a little funk funk. Was not Esau a hunter? So he has camouflaged himself among nations. Among people, among skin complexion. You see those camouflage coats they wear? They're all different because they got light spots, dark spots. They camouflage, aren't they? And then when they use the one for the summer, when they go out there to just kind of spot things, it's a lighter color, isn't it? That's what he has done. He has camouflaged his message. He has camouflaged it. That's, it, it, it is acceptable by everybody. Through his political power, his political agenda. agenda. That's what Yaakov did. It was a political agenda. Why? Because it was the rule of a kingdom. It was the rule of a kingdom. And he doesn't like that he's been relegated uh, to an Uma, just a tribe. He doesn't like that. And he has set forth, uh, he has sent forth uh, the very nation of his people to scatter, to go to the four corners. Uh, and this one, uh, not only did he go eastward, uh, but also those uh, that came out of the loins of this decrepit, vile uh, image of hell, uh, they went into the four corners to challenge the very nature of Yahweh has scattered Israel. And they have immersed themselves and camouflage and they are adaptable. The skin color, it changes from one to another. These are damn fools out there. Challenge me then. They don't like me. These men, believe me. I talked to a precious ark the other day. He says to me, preacher, when I found you a week ago, man. I have fellowship with this place. I would ask you a question. He began to ask. And of course, I don't take a long time with people. And I preach for about 30 minutes. Like this. He was a young man. He was quiet. And his words to me were not just Riach. But Zachin. 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 That's how he was talking. Man. Zaki, oh, oh, my. Like when sitting down to a nice meal, finished. That's all he could say. He was not trying to interpose or inject. He listened. And this preacher didn't hold back no punches. He used reflective pronouns that you would say, oh, that's nasty, that's cussing. I wouldn't say it before my children. But I said before adults, you understand? He that hath ear, let him hear with the ruach. Uh, not his Melachim menacing spirits. Rahim, are they not kept about those that fear Yah? Yes. Hallelujah. So they guide the very, uh, the very atmosphere as to what attacked the mind of Yisrael. Yes, let it on him. Come on, he's going. That's all right. Zakin Yeramik, he watch him. I like to see a battle every now and then. He's boring. He's boring than Riach. I said to my friend back there, uh, "You want to be with me?" He said, "No, son." 
Very seldom he will spend a lot of time with me because um, he, is bored, he is more bored than I am because I'm just too boring. I have no excitement. I don't do nothing to excite him. Okay, you want some almond milk and some cheese and some plantain? Yes, sir. And he'll sit there. I give him enough. To, he'll sit there. I know about what time his, his daddy gets home. He'll sit. That's the only thing. But as far as coming with me, too boring. Too boring. He'd rather go with him when he comes home than to be with me. See, he's boring. I'm boring. You understand? Yeah, he is. He'd rather. Come on. Hallelujah. Can I move on, Yisrael? How much more sore punishment shall we receive uh, if we had trampled the blood? You said the blood of your shoes is not worth a damn. It's the blood of your, it's the blood of Jesus. It's a damn lie. Hallelujah. Back to Daniel 8, 11. I want to finish this today. Hallelujah. It says in verse 11, yes, he got all, he magnified himself even as, uh, now this is your sure. He magnified himself even uh, to the czar or the prince of prince, or the prince of Sava, the prince of hosts. He even exalted himself as Yoshua. Has not this name Jesus and the Christo been exalted? Has not religion? Are not the name of these men today, these effeminate, vile, wicked men? Creflo Dollar Ministry? T.D. Jakes Ministry? Uh, what's the other ones? Uh, Kenny Hagen Ministry? Or Roberts Ministry? Richard Roberts' ministry and his wife was nothing but a two-dollar slutty whore sleeping with the college boys out there. That's why they dropped or reduced him from the presidency of the university out there. She was a two-dollar slut. Oh, haggly whore. Did not take honor in her getting older, fantasizing in this damn pornography, and television and YouTube, this damn filth. And she's sleeping with the young boys that's supposed to be Christian boys. And they are Christian boys. I will, man. Hell in these whole houses tomorrow. Oh, Christian preacher, he's going to go out all night tonight and lay out. And get drunk and get in. Well, I'm talking. I'm talking about the day. Y'all don't hear me. I am the name of the Lord. Somebody give me. I want to hear. Don't do. Don't do. Don't do. Don't do. I want to hear. You don't hear me. Don't do. Yes, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Cause you slept with Betty Bell the hoe, and everybody knows she's a hoe because you're a worse hoe. It is the truth. Hallelujah. Those that call themselves Hebrews, they're worse than those wicked devils of hell. Every kind of damn lie. It's all right to smoke weed, get you five or six wives. They're not wives. Man search all his life for a wife. They're not wives. Hell, in order for a man to find a wife, he got to be a husband. And these freaks are not husband. They just go in the houses and bring in the captivity, silly women late with sin, burning in their own lusts and ready to do the, do the jung of Bonnie. That's all it is. I speak frankly. That's all it is, Yisra. Yeah, they're not husbands. They're not taking care of no. Some of them have five, six, seven youngers. They're not taking care of them. You got pimping the wife and their home babysitting. Sit, Got the, what they call wives, two or three in one house. That's wicked. That's filthy. They're not wives. They're lustful, immature boys. Hallelujah. And that's the fact. Listen to this now in verse 11 again. Yes, he magnified himself even as the Tsar, the prince of Hosea. And by him, see, by this one. Listen. That's what I tell you. By him, the daily Zabach. The daily sacrifice, the daily offering uh, was taken away. See, by this spirit today, we have no todah to ya, do we? The daily. 
There should be a daily offering. The principles of Yah have not changed. By this one, by this totalist mindset, the daily offerings are they're taken away. So we don't we don't lift our hands and tell the Yah, Hallelujah. We, come on, it takes it almost takes an act of hell to make you do that. By Him, it's all about the daily offering. It's all about that. Some trust me, please. You never trust me on any message. Trust me on this one. It's all about the daily zabach, the daily sacrifice, the offering. That bring pleasure unto the bosom of Yah. And by this one that shall rise up. By this anti Hamashiach, Not the anti-Christ. By this anti Yoshua Hamashiach, The offering that pleases Yah. It was eradicated. It was taken. You understand? That's what this is all about now. The daily offering was. He uh, uh, said the daily offering. Hallelujah. The sacrifice was taken away, uh, and the place of his mikdash uh, was cut down. The place is not our body, the, the bay of the mikdash, place of Yah. Isn't it not the house, the bed? Does not the offerings of the burnt offerings go out of the mikdash place? So do not the burnt offerings of our Torah, and our, do not they come out of this? See, it said, until it was cut down. Until they were overwhelmed, until they had no confidence in Yah, until they would not even lift him up. And they say, who is like this man that is able to tear down the very strongholds of Yah and to break down all of the very tenets of the Most High and establish an order whereby we have substance, we have bread, wisdom, we have lechem to offer. We have substance to offer unto him. Not this one by the name of Yah. Until the daily offerings were taken away, Yisrael, until they were cast down, until literally it means that. And he's talking about these times or the end times. Next verse says, verse 12, it says, and an army or a host was given him against, listen now, a mighty contingency. These damn Jesus thumpers, the liars, the Christians, the black Hebrews, the white Hebrews, the Hebrews, they're not the children of Yah. He says, and an army was given him against the daily offerings by reason of Pesach, of their transgression. We know what Pesach is, uh, Pesach. It is the transgressing against the Torah. And because there were so many transgressing against the Torah, there was an army delivered unto him to speak and to defy the daily offering that goes unto Yah. Oh, you don't have to say all that. You get angry as a damn hound dog because one is uh, acknowledging Yah and lifting him up. Uh, you get around them, you say, Hallelujah, praise the name of Yah in Yoshua. And they will frown upon that. Uh, you can talk all the damn foolishness. Uh, you can jest, uh, you can laugh. Uh, you can be a damn jackass and a damn clown. Uh, that's all right. Hallelujah. But don't talk about the name of Yah. Yeah. They want to take the daily offering out of your mouth. Uh, Told the ya, told the ya, in everything we give Torah unto ya, not to damn Jesus, in everything. And so he has a host of an army that's robbed Israel. That's all right, but there's a small remnant. There's a faithful few. There's a faithful few. It will tell us here. There's a faithful few. Hallelujah. Moving on. Verse 12 again, and an army was given him against the daily offering by reason. The reason because of their transgression, the, the Feshach. And it cast. Do you hear this? Sholach, it cast. When you cast, it is to hurl it, to throw it with force, to reject it. Listen what they did. And it cast down what? The truth. Talk to me. What is the truth? And it cast down, and it cast down, and it cast down. You'll hear that, we don't hear it. And it cast down the truth, and it cast down the truth. It cast down the Torah, the Torah is truth. For your Sadiq is an everlasting Sadiq, and your Torah is, the truth is Ha'imet. And it cast down the truth. Can I read that again, my Zaki? And an army was given to him against the daily offerings by reason of transgression. And it, the transgression, the define of Yah, and it cast down the truth to the ground. And it cast down the truth. It defied, it rejected, it threw it down, it 
hurled it away. It rejected the truth. And look now, and it act, and it uses the word, and it prosper, or it shalach. It advanced. It was prosperous. It had wealth and power. Is not this whore that caused you to harrow down the truth? Is it not prospering in the sense of goods and service, materialism? Sure it is. That's what it says. You can think what you want to. That's easy for anyone to understand. You don't need revelation to understand that one verse. If you know, get nothing out of anything I preach today, you get understanding of this one verse. Sir. Here, this one that is against Yah, the spirit is against Yah. It causes an army. And the army of the Jesus thumpers, the army of the damn Lord thumpers, the army of the God thumpers, the Baptist army, the Methodist army, the Hebrew Israelites, uh, the white ones, the black ones, the white Jews, the black Jews. Uh, they have heralded down the truth of Yah. They have cast it down. They thump in their damn Jesus, the messianic and all of them. They call upon their damn gods, these vile, filthy things, these dog spirits. I can see nowhere in Torah, but every god was a damn dog. He is the mighty one. He will not share his honor with no one. Nothing. No man. Not a damn god for sure. Hallelujah. Verse, hallelujah. Verse 13. Then I heard one Kiroshim speaking. My ears were open. And another Kiroshim said to one who spoke, Listen now. How long shall be the vision concerning the daily offering? How long shall this persist? Daniel R. 8.13. And the transgression or the abomination of desolation. Have I not preached on that the abomination that make it desolation? Yes. He talks about the abomination of the Teah to Eba that make it shohath. That make it desolation. To give both the Kadosh, the Kodesh place, and the army to be trampled on the feet. You hear that? Not only will the host be trampled on the foot, but also the place of Yah. Also his bay at the house, Yisra'ya. Shall be trampled Salah underfoot. But hear this, Yisraya, verse 14. And he said to me, To be the time of 200, 300 days, then shall the Kodash place be Sadiq, it shall be cleansed. He said, Three and a half years it shall be. They're going to trample under, they're going to try to root out and destroy everything that identify with Yah. That's why we cannot let the praises go out of our mouths. We cannot, Yisra'ya. I, I want to show some. I got a message I put together. I, I, I have to find it, but it, 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 it's, it's profoundly about the praises of Yah and what it speaks to that. Not just the regular scriptures you've read before and heard. It's beyond that, Yisra'ya. It's beyond that. It's beyond that. And I will show you one day, Yah grants me the time if I live. If He grants me life, I will preach it one day. And someone will preach it, all right? Hallelujah. It shall be three and a half years. And Yah says, out of all that I've shown you, now here's the interpretation of the two horns and all of that. In verse 15, And it came to pass when I, even Daniel Yael, has seen the vision. He said, and I sought the binah, the meaning. I sought the revelation, the discernment, the understanding. I sought, when one seeks after something, one lays down everything to find it out. It's one searches. He says, I sought, I sought out. I sought, I sought for the meaning. Then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a Geber or valiant warrior. One that is set to fight for the kingdom. He said, there stood before me one as a valiant and a mighty warrior. One that was strong and one that was mighty. One that had the, one that had the armor of almighty Yah on them. He said, and I heard a man's voice, not a boy's voice. Does it say that in your writing? You say, I heard a man's voice. All you hear today, my friend, is voices of voice. He said, I heard a man's voice. Well, that's not trying to make your voice bass and all that. He said, I heard a man's voice. There's strength in a man's voice. It promotes fear, security. Sure it does. Comfort, might. 
He said, I heard a man's voice. I want to hear that voice. When he calls, I will answer. Oh, oh, even oh, Eli. Eli was the wicked man as his sons ravished the house of Yisrael. But there was one by the name of Shamul. Yah. There Yah says, my boy, you're mine. And even that foolish, wicked man said the next time he called, just say, here I am. Here I am, oh yeah. Here I am. He said, I heard the voice of a man speak. He said, I heard the voice of a man speak, and that voice was none other than the very power of Yoshua Hamashiach. He said, between the banks of Ula, and which called and said, this is what he said now, he called and said, Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel. He called the one who is, and the name Gabriel means the warrior of Yah. That's what Gabriel means. He called. Look at this one now. He heard a man's voice. He that withholdeth, withholdeth until he be taken out of the way, or he that lets or hold back, he that restrains the very power. See, in Thessalonica, Shaul talks about that, doesn't he? There's one that withhold, that one that will strain. Here is this one. He is Gabriel. He withhold the very death and the destruction of God. And the very manifestation of the power of darkness to his fullness. He is the one. And so Yahshua, he calls on Gabriel. He calls upon Gabriel, the warrior of Yah, the strong, valiant man of Yah. This is what he says. He says, make this. And he uses the word uh, halas, halas, halas. Make this. Make this man. Not other man, but make this man. And the word halas, when he said make this man, this is what it implies, son. There is no substitution, just this man. Ha halas, make this man. Is he not precise? He said make this man. Make this man. Make this man. Not his compadres, make this man. Not Belteshazzar, Bel is my protector. Make this man. I'm glad he made that man. Make this man, he said, make this man. I want you to make this man to understand the vision, the hazon. I want you to understand the oracles of Yah, the prophecy, the speech, the pattern. Make this man to understand the hazon. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid. I tremble. The year I tremble. And I fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, Ben Adam. Look what he says now. For at the time, for at the time, for at the time of the kids, the end, shall be this vision. Are we at the time of the end? Shall you understand? Shall the messengers understand? At the time of the end. And the more the ark preach this, we preach it, it becomes more excellent. Oh, we just get a little tidbit today. And then this man comes along and expounds this man, this man, this man, this man, this man. Come on. He said, until the time of the kids, until the end, this is this vision. Well, what is it about, y'all? Yeah? Moving. Now, as he's speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. And he touched me. And it said, uh, he did not make me stand Yosha, but Omid. He made me stand or set upright. That I, it was a fixation. I couldn't move. I was fixed. He made me stand upright. Hear this, Yisraya. And he said, Behold, see, I will make you yada experience to know that you may write unto the Yisraelites in this hour that they may understand. I will make you yada what shall be in the, does it say the last? In of the za'am of the indignation. I will make it understood to you. What shall be the process 
which shall come to pass in the last in in the akharith the akhron in the last end of the indignation or the desolation that make it desolate he say for at that time listen now he says, for at that time, Moad, when Yah uses the word appointed, we have his appointed Moadim, do we not? These are the appointed times, his hog, the feast of Yah. He said, at that Moad, the end shall be. It's coming at the appointed time. It's coming precisely. It shall be because Yah has appointed it. Listen, Yisrael, Yah. He said, the ram, which you saw having two horns, or the kings of Madai or Media. Listen. He said that the king you saw with the two horns of the kings of Madai or Media. When you refine your research, you will find that these are the people of Madai. It says, these are the people that descended from the sons of Yetha, from Goma, from Russia, from the Eastern Bloc. These are the sons, them. Hallelujah. These are the sons. He said, those kings are the kings of Persia. Who are, what, who are the only two superpowers in the world? It was America and Russia. That was it. The sons of Yetha. These are the sons or the kings of Persia. Of Persia. Of Persia. And he also says, I, I, at a later time I will go into the details of the, of the analogy of Persia and all of that, alright? I, I want to finish this today, alright? He said in verse 21, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia, or the Greek, or Yavan, of Greece. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king of that order. And we know the first king, all right? I know that it is a physical, but it is also a spiritual king. He said, and the czar of the prince of princes stood up, Yoshua HaMashiach. And there's the king. There's the king of the earth, Hashatan. He said, he is the, he is the, he is the, he is the father. He is the horn of the eye, or the horn between the eyes. Now that, now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it. He said, four kingdoms, four mighty kingdoms, four kingdoms stood up, four kingdoms. What are the most prominent, powerful kingdoms on the earth today? You find it in Britain, France, America. Canada is really not in that group of nations. But those are, the, if you look in history, the kingdom of P Portugal, France, Britain, and America, they dominated every part of the world. They dominated the slave trade. They dominated the commerce and everything. It's just a fact. You don't have to buy it. It's still a fact. You understand? Portugal, Portugal was the most vicious uh, 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 purveyor of every kind of wicked idea, uh, of the most, some of the most brutal slavery, and some of the most brutality of any nation upon the earth. No other nation like that nation. And we see it still today. Or oh, the G7, what is it now? Is it still the G7 or the G8 now? But they don't, they incorporate other nations just, just for the appeasing uh, of the, of the ability to, uh, to rob those nations. Japan is not, Japan has money in the sense that it is propped up by this beast and other nations and that the resources of that nation really is not used for the people there, like any other nation. Come on. And they were not even a part of that. But Greece, talking about the nation of the Roman entity of America, you talk about Britain, you talk about France, Portugal, and you can kind of throw Canada, but Canada is just, Canada is about as large population as New York, all right, city. Not too many more people, okay? 27, 30 million people. But these are the powerful kingdoms. These are the sons of Yepha. They proceed out of the loins of Yepha. These are the ministers of the kingdom of Asa, that the administrator, and they began with the religious format. Canada, you can't speak. If I went to Canada and someone come in and hear me talking like this, I would be arrested. You cannot do that. You cannot speak against anything. You cannot speak against faggots. 
You cannot speak against this wicked whore, Catholicism of Jesus. Someone will come and record that, believe me, they would, uh, the pull is out would be there that evening. And that's a fact. He talks about this Greece, of this kingdom that has stood up. This Greece and everything uh, is Greece today. Everything is Grecian. Oh, that's a Greek name. That's a Greek name. He did not come in to the Greek people. He came to those that are scattered among the Greek. Verse 23. I want you all to hear this. And I want to read this carefully. I have a few verses here and I'm going to close. He says, and in the latter time of their Melchut, their kingdom, when the transgressors, that's an S on that, isn't it? The Pasha, the transgressors, listen, are come to Tomein to fall. It has come to fall, Yisrael. There's nothing that is honorable today. When it has come to fall, uh, a king now of fierce countenance and of dark understanding, of dark uh, and of understanding of dark sentence shall stand up. Who is this king? One that has no Torah light. If any man speak not according to the Nabi or the testimonies of Yah, it's because he has no light in him. Say this one that shall arise. And here's a king. And the king represents more than just a physical man. It represents a, a mentality, a spirit. And there's no king that has stood up like what we call America. That's the king. That is the spiritual king of America. That's her name. And these that call themselves Hebrews that say that because the word black or negro or has become a byword, we shall become a byword. There's not one nation. There's not one people really that you can identify that their nation has a name or meaning to it. You can look at every country in Africa, Cameroon, Uganda. There is no specific to the meaning. Neither Great Britain, neither France. They, all of them are bywords. Every nation. And America, they say, America's refugees, they by words, what does it mean? The by words have no meaning, Israel, because it's not all of the loins of Yah. That's why the word Jesus has no damn meaning. It has no meaning. It is a hybrid, it is a made up word. Hallelujah. This one shall come with this dark sentence. Verse 24 at his power shall be mighty but not by his own power this one that resists Yah, it shall not come by his own might and he shall listen now there's one that stands in his bosom that gives him great power that it has been granted unto for season listen now hear this and his power shall be mighty and by his own power he shall show hath he shall destroy he shall mar, he shall break down, he shall, he shall break, he shall destroy. And he uses the words, uh, Pala, he will shall destroy wonderfully. Man, that's something when you say one is destroying someone, it's so beautiful the way they're going to destroy them. He shall destroy marvelously. It's going to be extraordinary. It's going to be su surpass any kind of destruction. He shall destroy wonderfully. And he shall, salach, he shall prosper he shall make advance. He shall be seen as the one that is the cure, cure for all for all. He shall be profitable. And he shall act. And listen now. And he shall destroy. Does it say that? Yes. Hear me. And he shall destroy who? What else? He shall destroy who? He shall destroy the mighty. 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 He shall destroy the Kodash. The Kodash. The Kodash. The Kodash. The Kodash. People who are the Kodash. They are the ones that are the elect of Yah. They are the ones that are Yisrael. This is Yah as a rod to us in Tehillim. In Psalms he says, you have trotted down them that era from your statues, Yah. For the deceit is of Lies of Shekha. They have lied against your Shabbat. They have replaced it with the damn Sunday. He shall raise this one up. He shall destroy those of Yehuda. He shall destroy those of Yisrael. Does it say that? Did, did not Gabriel make known the vision unto this man? 
unto this man, him. I'll read that last part again. His power in verse 24. And his power shall be mighty. And by his own power, and by his own power, and not, but not by his own power. And he shall shochath, he shall destroy, he shall do it palal, wonderfully, it shall surpass, it shall be extraordinary, it shall be a supreme destruction. And who is he going to destroy? The wicked? Is he going to destroy those that bow down at the hashatan? That's in the hands of Yah. He shall destroy, he shall destroy. And he shall uh, so lack. He shall destroy and so lack. And he shall act. And y'all said, make sure you get it right. Make sure you get it right. And shall destroy. A confirmation. The, the mighty. What a mighty above we serve. Come on. He shall destroy the mighty. He shall destroy the mighty. And the Kodash people of Yah. He's going to attack Israel. He's going to destroy them for one thing. Can I tell you, to satisfy your bosom, that a boy here, a small remnant, he's going to save all Yisra'ya. He's going to destroy the mighty and the Kodash. He's destroying the minds and he's destroying the will. And out of that, there's a, a remnant. Few that be that find it. Mi'ot, mi'ot, few. Little that find this truth. He shall destroy the mighty people. Yah has given us a mighty testimony, and we don't give a damn. He has given us mighty truth and we reject it. He has given us the might of the dam of Yahshua, the daily offering that we offer up unto Yah in this bay at the offering of Todah with great continuous praise that we lift our hands and we lift our voice and we don't give a damn. We don't give a damn. We don't give a damn. We are stiff necked and stubborn. We are uncircumcised in this damn wicked heart. It takes a mighty act for us to do that. You do it because I say it. I will, man. Don't think you're escaping out there. This is for you. Hallelujah. He shall destroy the mighty and the Kodash. Are we the Kodash people? Come on. I'm not afraid to say he's going to destroy them. He's going to travel. Yah's going to travel out all those that have air from the Torah that despise his Torah. Keep keeping your damn Sunday. Keep calling on your damn filthy Jesus and your Lord. Keep on. He's going to stomp you into hell. He's going to stomp you into hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is what he shall do. That's why we must have the testimony of Yahshua. We can't love our lives unto death. It says, and through his shechel, through his policy, Daniel 8.25, through his shechel, through his policy, his superficial prudence and insight, through his shechel, his understanding, also, listen, through his policies, through his political power, through his ability to alter your mind and your concept, it says he shall cause craft. Now we see that we, what we think of craft, come on, crafts and making baskets and, and knit, knitting and needling. I watched this a whole one day she was needling or, or crafting a a, a blanket or something for uh, maybe her daughter. I don't know what it was, but them fingers were moving. She was craft. That's what we call craft. But that's what not what y'all call craft. He calls it mirma, treachery and lies and deceit through his policy, lies and deceit. Because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. That's why we are cold people. We're cold toward Yah. We're cold toward His truth. We're cold toward His name. We're shame of His name. I'm not ashamed. He said, and through craft he shall, and, and, and through his policy, he shall call mirma of deceit and treachery and lie. That's why we are treacherous with each other. That's why we will lie. That's why we deal funny with each other. Come on. He will cause craft to prosper in his hands. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. He shall magnify himself say, I am the mighty one. And the people shall give credence unto him. They shall receive the revival. They shall see the wound that had been scarred. They shall see the heal of the wound healed. They shall see the economy. They shall see. It says he's going to show light. Doesn't it say that? He's going to probably go see the economy heal. They're going to see everything restored. And people just going to, oh, we got to bring an offering. We can't even buy. We got we to show our allegiance unto him. We, got, we can't even buy and sell. We can't even sell the offering or the wisdom of the gifts of this one unless we receive the mark. 
Not buy a damn loaf of bread or some damn fat back and chitlins. That's not what it's about, Yisrael. They have these damn dogs have bewitched us and tricked us on that lie. They have deceived us. But that's all right. I'll bring it. Don't worry about it. That's what Papa would say. Don't worry about it. Daddy, how are you going to do that? You know, the little one say, Papa, Papa, how you, what is that? I said, don't worry about it. You don't bother with it. If I explain, they will not know anyway. Papa, what is that? I don't worry about it. Sarah said, Papa, what is that? I said, don't worry about it. I have a Papa, what is that? Well, look at that right now. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. Yeah. He shall prosper. That is, that, is, that is profound in this. He shall shalach. He shall advance. He shall have prosperity. He shall grow. He shall become great. That is what shalach is. He shall prosper. And through lies and deceit, he shall cause, uh, he, shall, he shall prosper, he shall prosper, and in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Does it say that? Zachim Birbi warns us all the time. He tells us that straight and narrow is the way that leads unto Yoshua life, Chayil. And why it brought is the gate that leads unto destruction. And how many go in there? Many that go therein. Many, it is through craft. It is through miramach. It is through your line. You magnify your own self and your own heart. You magnify your lies above the truth of Yah. You magnify your damn Jesus, your black Jesus, your white Jesus, your Jew Jesus, your Arabic Jesus, your Chinese Jesus, above your sure damn all of your Jesus. Damn your gods too. Hallelujah. And then this bastard, as we do, it says uh, he shall destroy men and then this beast of hell and he shall also stand up against the czar, the prince of princes. But he shall be broken without hand. He's going to rise up and say, all right, now you come out and challenge me. And that's what this beast is doing today. He's going to break their Jesus. He's going to break the sept of strength. That's why many, that's 99% of the world that call themselves Christians. Listen, all Christians go into hell. You got, you got nearly two, you got one point plus six billion, nearly two billion Christians. You got 1.2 million, more than that. You got countries like Indonesia that is 90, uh, 99, they got 900 million people. They're all, they're all Muslim. They're going to hell. You got Pakistan with nearly 900 million people. They're all going to hell. You got India with 1.2 billion people that, that are Hindus uh, and Sheiks and, uh, and, and all. They're all going to hell. You got Rome. You got America that is Catholic and Protestant. Every kind of wicked religion that they're all going to hell. You understand, Yisraya? They're going to hell. You got South America. You got all these countries. They're wicked. They defile the Torah of Yah. They practice this vile nature of this one that has been raised up by Hashatan. You understand that? He has raised up this damn image of Jesus Christ. He has sent it forth by the Edomites. He said to them, your birthright has been stole. Fight out them damn devils. Fight out the mighty ones. And Yah said, that's all right. I, I will show you who they are. That's the mighty people. They're the Kodesh one. He said, kill them all. Damn it, kill every last one of them. Because when you finish killing, there's going to be a remnant left. And that shall be my crown of my jewel. And that's a fact. It's settled, Yisrael. And I'm going to stop there. Hallelujah. Is settled. Period. Whether you buy it or not. Right men say, preach, I don't buy one word. That's all right. Now you won't offend me. Hallelujah. It's simple. I make it simple. You can understand. May the riches of God rest upon you all. You that have joined us, greetings. Hey, let us stand to our feet. Send an offering, all right? How about we do barak you for all things? And all of those, those whose name we do not call out, we pray for them. Our precious Ach, they read, you are the healer, touch his body. Give him strength, his imuna, let it grow tremendously. Assure him and his ishal nima, strength in her bosom that all shall be well. Pray, we ask the strength on his children and all our Ach, we heal his body. 
and his isha uh, uh, tiffany and the children bless them mightily in all yisraya we pray ya that you will strengthen us all guide us to stay for we told you for the simple bread it was simple it may have been soup but it was simple ya now grant us to stay the privilege that we may walk in the torah of life your sure and have fellowship god your people take them home safely and give those that have joined us by the live broadcast of the stream rest we ask it all in your sure's name and with the breath of our loins that you have placed in us, we shout hallelujah, 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 Yabrak Yisrael.